Hi Trader, Tina here once again from shortmetina.com with my daily recap. Uh, so where, where did we last leave off? I think we last left off on Thursday, which means that everyone had, well not everyone, but Friday for the most part was a holiday for the majority of folks. And so everyone had an enormous or a hopefully a great three day weekend to relax, have fun, unwind, binge TV, study the market, study their charts, review portfolios, whatever it is. Everyone had that extra day, that extended three-day weekend. Uh, so hope you enjoyed it once again. I myself, I was able to relax, get some work done. That's always a good thing. But before we kick it off with a recap of the overall markets, I want to welcome you. If this is your first time tuning in, if you are, or if this is rather your very first time, I mean, like you've never, ever, ever heard a short me Tina video before, and this is your very first time, I like to welcome you and do us a solid in the comment section comment. You can let us know your name. You can let me know how you found the channel or how you found me, what you thought about my overall analysis and presentation. I'm so open to criticism, constructive criticism, criticism, not so constructive criticism. I just want to know that there are actually people on the other end of the viewership that I see. And secondly, if this is not your first time tuning in, if this is not your first rodeo or your first time listening to my videos and you keep coming back day in, day out, or at least once a week, or you are a regular listener, you tuned in regularly, I want to say thank you. It is very much so appreciated. You are the reason why we're continuing to grow. And I just checked our follower count on YouTube and we're about uh, about 40 or, well, I didn't just check it. Like, relatively speaking, I saw the number, let's say, earlier today or yesterday, something like that. Uh, and we are about uh, about 50 or so from that magic golden number of 1,000 followers, which would be great, which would be awesome. Maybe we'll get there at the end of the week. Uh, whether or not we do, the videos don't stop. I do them every single day. And so we're going to jump in into the overall markets again. Right now, what you're looking at is the SPY, the S&P 500 daily chart dating back to 2017. I've gone over this to the point of nausea. Like I have been talking about the SPY since we had this initial breakdown back in October when I told folks not to panic and I didn't panic. We ended up shorting at some point. It was a great short. Right. Anyway, so sitting here at 290.30 for the past, we can say for the past two weeks, the past uh, five to 10 or so trading days, the SPY has traded within a very restricted range since breaking out of the of, uh, resistance or breaking out of this uh, multi-year channel. That resistance level, as you know, it comes in around uh, 280 to 282. Since gapping up and breaking out for the past few days, we've traded within a restricted range, hence why I indicated on Thursday that the market is relatively boring to me right now, which is good. Sometimes boring is good. So that restricted range, we can say, comes in at around 288 to about 290. Uh, so that's okay. So the fact that once again, rallying off of December lows, right, 233, we're, we're sitting here at 290, that's a huge move. That's what about 60 or so points. So when the market, if the market wants to trade sideways for the next few weeks, granted, I'll say it's boring, but that's fine for me because what it's telling me is the market is digesting this huge move, right? Because if we just kept going up and kept going up, obviously that's not sustainable. But if we take a moment to so when I say breather, I mean pause, right? And pause means, you know, not necessarily going up, just kind of like trading within a range like we see here. For me, that's a good thing. Uh, so before I go, as long as the SPY can stay above that 280 to 282 mark, things should be good because we are outside of this channel. And the last time we did that was way back in August uh, of 2018. Well, most more specifically, August to October of 2018. So... I'm going to recap now because that was semi all over the place. Uh, so SPY daily chart dating back to 2017. We've been trading within a range. We recently broke out of that range, rallied from December lows, right, of around 233, broke out of that 280 to 282 resistance level. Uh, and now we're sitting here at 290. For the past few days, we've been trading between 288 to 290. Not very much, uh, not not much movement, and you can see it within the candlesticks. 
and that's okay because in my opinion we're digesting this move uh if we trade sideways for a few more days or weeks uh, i think the odds of us continuing the uptrend uh increases so that's my take on the spine that's what i've been paying attention to or will be paying attention to what else and the IWM, so what I'm paying attention to with the IWM, obviously, is resistance. Again, that comes in around 158 to 160. We haven't traded above that range since October. So that's about six months of us trading underneath 158 to 160. We're sitting here at 155.23. Today is no different. So if we can actually get above there, that should sound the bells for a lot of traders, including myself, because that will mean uh, we're doing something that we have not done since October. Uh, it's been, a, again, it's been a bit slow moving uh, since we rallied off of December lows, right? We've sort of been, not sort of, we've been trading sideways since March. Uh, that's okay. That's fine. Again, just waiting for it to get above uh, 158 to 160. What else? And then we have a Tesla ticker TSLA daily chart dating back to 2017. And I've done several videos on Tesla before. Uh, it's a, right now it's displaying a setup that I like to trade or a pattern that I like to trade, which is the channel. How I tend to trade those is I just simply buy support. I simply buy support. So sitting here at 262.75, I wouldn't jump in again because support for me uh, comes in at around 240 to 250. Tesla has held that mark for the most part dating back to 2017. So you've had about two years of the stock trading above 240 to 250. So I wouldn't buy this until it gets around there. So that's what I'm waiting on. What else? And then we have uh, Twitter, ticker TWTR daily chart. Uh, so the stock, uh, rather the company reports earnings uh, tomorrow morning, uh, April 23rd. So I'm definitely going to be paying attention to that. Uh, there's several scenarios that seem like they can potentially play out. There's a gap to be filled here at around uh, $42. Uh, will it fill that gap or will it sell off and revert back to support that has held since 2018? Support comes in at around $25 to $26. So I'm going to be paying very close attention to earnings tomorrow and you should as well. I think a trade can be emerging. What else? And then we have Zynga daily chart. Again, full disclosure, we did go long Zynga in the premium member community somewhere around here when the stock was trading in the low to mid threes. I really like the setup. I really like the chart sitting here at 552. We are just pennies shy of making a new all-time high. I believe the last time the high was around five. Uh, I want to say 555 or 554, either which way we're about two cents to, let's say anywhere from three to four cents from making a new high. So we're right there. Anytime a stock, I know folks like to find stocks that are at the bottom, uh, bottom of the barrel rather. Uh, it's really good uh, if you're looking for stocks to trade that you pay attention to those that are making all time highs because stocks that make all time highs tend to go on to make new all-time highs. So sitting here at 5.52, like I've been stating for the past two weeks, I still like this longer term. I think we can see $6 at some point with a bull market. What else? And then we have Snapchat, ticker SNAP, off about 1% on the day, closed at 11.53. Uh, despite that, I do still like the overall setup of Snap, uh, a company that's also reporting uh, earnings tomorrow after market close. So. I don't know what earnings gonna earnings will look like tomorrow for Snap. The stock can gap up, it can gap down. Either which way, uh, I still, again, I still like the setup. I'm looking at these gaps here potentially to be filled. There is one um, that's here at around, what is that? Uh, that comes in at around uh, $10. So the gap at uh, 10.06. And there's a, another one uh, further down here at around 7.05. I doubt this one gets filled, but you never know, because if it does get filled, that's a, a steep decline from 11.53. The most likely scenario, if we do have a gap down, would be that fill of around 10.06, and that's actually what I'm paying attention to. If that happens more than likely, I will be adding to my longer term portfolio. Uh, what else? Because I am long snap. What else? And then we have ticker SESN daily chart. Uh, so let's just focus in on price action here. We closed at 102 off about 13% on the day, which is a steep decline. But uh, despite that, um, so a couple of things. So the fact that we closed at 102 and low was a dollar. It says to me that there might be potentially more selling heading into tomorrow or the remainder of the week. But in spite of that, if you pay attention or if you look back here, uh, going back to January, the stock has actually been in an uptrend for the past uh, 
two to three months, right? An uptrend characterized by higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. So although we had this little sell-off here of about 13% to close at 102, and the fact that the selling might continue into tomorrow, I don't see it like getting completely out of hand. I'd be very surprised if it dips below 90 cents or let's say the high 80s. Uh, so if you're looking to go long from a risk reward perspective based on the chart, that might be the area to kind of uh, zero in on. And then we have to go YUMA daily chart. So we closed here at 22 cents, up about 25% on the day, huge move confirming volume. Uh, based on the chart, and this is going back to November of 2018, so about six months of data. Uh, as long as we can stay above 19 cents, you should be fine, right? Because right now, sitting at 22 cents, you're slightly above that resistance mark here, the one that has held again, dating back to uh, November of 2018. As long as you can stay above uh, 19 cents, give or take, I think things should be fine. Uh, and seeing about 30 cents should be in the cards for this particular stock. What else? And then we have ticker ICON daily chart. I just want to pay attention to price action around here uh, dating back to March of 2019, which essentially is just last month. So we closed at 238, uh, a huge runner, right? Up 25% on the days, uh, on the day rather, huge winner, nice move with confirming volume. So for me, uh, as long as it can stay above here, this breakout base of around $2, as long as it can stay above there, I think it has a real shot at hitting 3 based on the shorter term price movement. What else? And let's round it out with ticker ZYNE, uh, another huge winner up about 17% on the day. I like it close at 950. So we definitely broke out of this, in my opinion, this rounding bottom that started in October of 2018, completed in April of 2019. Uh, we can call that area around 750 to $8. So we broke out of that rounding bottom base uh, again to close here at 950. Uh, so based on the chart and volume that's pouring in, I can see this uh, getting to around $11.50 without any sort of major resistance. Uh, once it gets there, then the resistance kind of starts to step in. So I like ticker ZYNE. It doesn't mean that the stock is not going to have its pullbacks. Stocks always pull back, but again, based on price action, based on what I'm seeing, the stock is acting very bullish. So put it on your watch list. I'm going to put it on mine. So let's cap it there. Tina, once again, from shortmetina.com. If you enjoyed any portion of the video, uh, wow, that didn't go so right. If you enjoyed any portion of this video, I'd like for you to do three things for me. One, comment in the comment section. Uh, do you agree with my analysis? Disagree? Did you like any parts of this video? Any parts that you didn't understand? Just let me know. Drop a comment in the comment section. That's the first thing. The second thing is... Again, I do videos Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So if you want to hear more videos like this, just definitely head on over to our YouTube channel at Short Me Tina. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. If you are subscribed, notifications are turned on. Anytime I upload a video, which is Monday through Friday, you will boom automatically be notified. And lastly, lastly, I've been trading for over 15 years. So if you think you can learn anything from this quote unquote stock market veteran, shortmeetina.com sign up become a member thank you for listening and as always thank you